Hello, everyone. We'll get started in just a minute. Welcome. All right. It is five o'clock. And we are ready to start watching work. Actually, it's 501 if anybody's counting. <laughs> um, and we're ready to start watching me work with the me and the title is you. We've been doing this for like forever. No, for like um since like I don't know, 2009, maybe. Um we started out in the lobby of the public theater where I would just show up and work and invite uh, other uh artists and people just to show up and talk with me about their work and their creative process and we've been doing it pretty much the same way ever since um and uh so what we do is we sit here together for 20 minutes by the timer and then when the timer goes off we talk with you about your work and your creative process so watch me work the me in the title is you now on zoom which we're very blessed to have, thanks to HowlRound and the Public Theater. And Lolly is organizing this for us in real time. So if if uh, you have a question, Lolly can tell you how to get in touch. So Lolly. Yeah. yeah, if you are in Zoom with us and you have a question, you can use your raise your hand reaction, which is gonna be in the reactions tab at the bottom of your screen. If you have any trouble finding it, just send a message in the chat and I can help you out. Uh, if you're watching the live stream with us on HowlRound, feel free to send us your questions via the Public Theater's Twitter or Instagram account or via the Watch Me Work Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. So that's how you'll ask us questions. Great. Okay. Let me set my timer. Ooh. And here we go.
All righty. Here we are. Does anybody have a question? Is that Lolly? Did Lolly just text me and say that her laptop was that Lolly? Hmm. All right, let me go get my phone. I think um, I don't see Lolly on here. So I am going to, uh, I think her, her laptop might have crashed. Hold on just a sec. Yep. Okay. Great. So uh, we're going to wait. She says her laptop is going to be back on shortly. Um, Jennifer, you've got a question. I can't unmute you because she's the host. So we're just going to wait. Anybody else? Think of your questions. Have them ready to go. It's Magic Monday. We love technology. We just love technology. Um, the great thing about having Watch Me Work on Zoom is that we can, you know, show up from wherever we are, which is really, really cool. Um, so it's it, we're very fortunate and very lucky. And sometimes, you know, tech is what it is. So it's all right. We'll have a few more minutes to work, maybe. There's Lolly. I see her, the little square. Hello. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was very dramatic. <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> My computer just crashed and I was like, no. <laughs> um, here we are. Oh, great. We have a question. <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> Thank you, Lolly. Hi, Suzanne Laurie. How are you? Hey, Jennifer. How are you? Hi. Um, so I have kind of a broad question, but also related to something I'm working on. Okay. Um, so I'm working on this like one act play that sort of dealing with like a feminist sort of limbo, if you will, where a character is kind of like trying to kind of like is an in between world between like the world she lives in and the world she wants to live in kind of dealing with issues of like how women treat each other, how men treat women and I really want to tackle like her mental state in an interesting kind of physical way. And I wanted to ask you, because I know I've read a lot of your work, is there a stage direction that you can write that's impossible? To do? Yeah, oh. like, could it be ever be like too extreme that like you shouldn't even try it or should you just put it out there and let the director and actors figure oh. it out and they can let you know if they can't do it? It sounds like it's gonna be a really fun play. I would say write, Write it the way you see it, hear it, imagine it, want it. And then I think the production is going to have a wonderful time, you know, coming up with with what they can. I think that's the fun part about creating a creating anything. <laughs> you know, you get to see what happens as they grow into themselves or become themselves or get produced, you know? Yeah. I'm not a real practical person to be honest with you, like directing and all of that. I've tried that and I'm like, oh, I actually have to think of like how this works, but I like writing because someone else has to figure it out. But I just wondered if there's ever like a burden you could place on someone by maybe going too far. <laughs> well, I, I, th I think you're, I mean, I, I think that what the most important thing is write it how you want it. Uh, you don't have to make it more challenging than it needs to be. You know what I mean? Some people think, oh, I'll, I'll do that. And then they'll think I'm really great because I've written a stage direction that they can't do. And, you know, let that go and just write it like you imagine it. Mm -hmm. And if it's too far out there for your director, you know, maybe they can grow with you and, and find a solution 
or you find a director who's like, I'm really into this, these kinds of, you know, possibilities for staging, you know, it'll help you maybe find your right director or directors, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe you direct it yourself, you know, it, but, but yeah, just, just write it. You stay true to what you want. Don't be unnecessarily, or, you know, just, I'm going to impress them by writing really out their stage directions. I mean, you know, that's like someone who uses a $25 word when a $2 word will do, you know? So right. you don't, you know, that's kind of a thing. Yeah. No, that yeah. helps. That helps a lot. I just wanted to ask you. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Have fun with it. It sounds really cool. Yeah, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. But you're right. I don't want to just be unnecessarily like challenging just to like show I'm a stude. I more just want to do it because it fits the character more than anything. Yeah, yeah. No, it sounds great. It sounds great. Go for it. I would totally go for it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Jennifer. Mm. Oh, it looks like Jonathan has a question. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing, man? I'm fine, how are you? Yeah, good to see ya. <laughs> good to see you too. So I've been, um, I think last time there was, I was having these questions about, um, I guess it really came down to like enlarging community and mm -hmm. beyond like, for the sake of a, of a, of a piece of work, which is enlarging, my community for the sake of enlarging my community. Mm -hmm. uh, people that I know and elders and what have you. And, and surprisingly, um, surprisingly, there are folks much closer to me than I had originally realized. Oh, wow. Which is really kind of cool. And I'm like, I never thought like in that way or of you uh, or, cause you know, have to be folks are really close to you. You don't really, you only see the surface of who you know that they are. Um, uh -huh. So that's been really wonderful. Uh, the, where I'm at now though, is I'm in a moment of kind of like nearing the home stretch, which uh -huh. I'm really excited about. But as I'm approaching it, I'm realizing that like, there is um, the thing that needs to happen in, in the play <laughs> is, is ultimately probably something that needs to happen for me. <laughs> and so, so I'm in this moment of like, when you're like, are you writing the play or is the play writing you? And, and trying to figure out, um, basically trying to negotiate um, because I am in a home stretch and there's this wonderful feeling of like those three words, you know, in the play seems within sight. And uh -huh. you want to push forward and do that. But then there's also this moment where I'm like, oh, maybe there's something I need to investigate here. And I can I can take that time to do that. So I think that my question is, what is, how do you, the, the idea that writing isn't just the physical act of writing, but that there's so much potentially many other types of things involved in writing other than the actual physical act of it. Mm -hmm. And I was curious if you had any thoughts about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, I mean, there, there's, I mean, that's why I think that's why people think that um, writing is easy or being a writer is easy. Right. Because, you know, most everybody, we know how to do, you know, people do right. it. <laughs> It can do it you know everybody who can do it can do it right um but i think then when they sit down to write something um they realize that it's a lot more difficult than they imagined right um also you know because maybe watching a play is easy they feel like writing one must can't be that hard right. writing reading a novel is relatively easy can't be that hard you know and right. then when well, because as you said, Jonathan, there's a lot more to it than just the act of, you know, right. uh, doing that. Um, I, I, uh, but it sounds like you're, you're, I mean, you're gonna, you're almost finished and yet you're going, eh, maybe I won't be finished. Maybe, maybe. I'm, I don't wanna be done. 
Well, there's time to be done. I do. Rewriting. There's rewriting. I mean, you're not going to be. I mean, true. You're going to be. You're going to be done with the draft, and then you're going to put it away for a week or so, and then you're going to pull it out again, and then you're going to rewrite it. This no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe right. <laughs> no, I mean, I do. Definitely. And that you need to do and the research or whatever, those, those loose ends that you were like, mm, I don't know about those. You can do them when you rewrite. I, I can, I can. I, I, I suppose it felt like it was more personal or internal type things, but that can also, the play can live with me as I continue to do that. I guess if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going anywhere, is it? It's not going anywhere. No. Like leave, walk off, and like, oh no, now I can't work on it anymore, and I don't get to feel it because I'm, I, it's, I, I typed the end. Right, right. I type like the end again, the end again, the end again. <laughs> so, I mean, you're gonna get there several different times. Right, right. You know. Yeah. And give yourself, give yourself the the reward, if you will, of of crossing the finish line. Give Multiple yourself, times, or, or, or well, the just, first time. Give yourself the reward, and then, you know, get back into it. You know, right. you, you cross the finish line. You know? Cool. You do. And in and, and other news, in other news, uh, I did not laminate my artistic license. I am totally using it. Totally using it. Did not laminate it and put it in my back pocket. Did not do it. There you go, brother. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for that. Yeah, very, very, you're very welcome. Also, you can you know take a picture of it so you can have it on your phone. Okay, there you go. In your wallet, you know. So I, I, I got that. I see that. I received that. <laughs> well done. Oh, come on. You deserve to cross the finish line. I mean, come on. You victory. Ta da! I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Thank it's you. Fun. It's fun. <laughs> Thanks for your question. Thank Thanks, you. Jonathan. Um, up next, we have Louise, and then we'll go to Jillian, and then Gloria. Cool. No. Uh, okay, so um, this is a comment. Um, some weeks ago, I had mentioned what my challenges were in terms of writing about my mother. Mm -hmm. And um, you had made some suggestions, mm -hmm. in particular, just setting aside a certain amount of time to just focus on whatever you're focusing on, mm -hmm. which I started to do, you know, like five minutes here, 20 minutes there. What's interesting is that, um, and this is sort of alludes to part of what Jonathan was mentioning, that it's not just about the writing, that when you start to write, all of these other things are conjured up. Mm -hmm. And as starting the process, there were things that happened that, well, the brain never forgets, number one. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this storehouse, obviously, that we all have. And what I found, which is quite striking, is the things that I'm able to, oh, that really happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, this happened. Mm -hmm. And then I'm able to go into the detail of the specifics of what it was mm -hmm. that happened. So um, I guess my comment is not really a question, is that um, a lot of opportunities are presented and it's there's something that's um, imaginative and powerful too, to mm -hmm. just go back and have access and relive, whatever you want to call it, these very real experiences mm -hmm. that you had that you put someplace else. Right. It's still there, but you put it someplace else. And then when you start dealing with it, ah, here it is. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And how is it feeling working on your project? 
Well, it's a challenge because I'm actually um, working on um, a couple of projects, but I sort of, it feels like it's going to be a memoir, mm -hmm. but it could be a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But the, what, what has hit me is just the storehouse of information that has surfaced. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned, um, well, I used to um, be into Alice Walker. <laughs> I mean, I'm still into Alice Walker, but I remember, I mean, I remember pre The Color Purple, she did a book of short stories called You Can't Keep a Good Woman Down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw her and heard her when she was reading from that book, but then she also went on to talk about, which I agree with, how healthy writing can be mm -hmm. because you can really get in touch with a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And then if you write long enough, I'm not even talking about necessarily publish this, that, or the other, but just the record that you keep, how in touch you can be with your feelings, with what's going on. But the process, it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. It's ongoing. But um, I wasn't going to say anything that time. I was not going to speak up. But I did, and I'm glad I did. Oh, we're glad you did too. Yay. All right. Thanks, Louise. Thank you. Thanks so much, Louise. Uh, moving on to Jillian. Hey, Jillian. Oh, I don't think we can hear you, Jillian. Mm -mm. It seems that you're unmuted, but. Oh. Hello, Jillian. Okay, wait, let me ask. I'm asking you to unmute again. Can you hear me now? Oh, yep. Hey. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm <laughs> well, thank you. Good to see you. Good, good to see you too. Uh, so this week, you know, just plugging away. And I think the challenge that I'm running into is uh, breaking into act two and starting a scene in an exciting way. I mean, maybe it's really basic, uh, but it's, uh, it, yeah, that's it. I, I feel like I, every time I take pen and paper, or I keep going. It's just, how can I make something ex more exciting? So that's kind of what I'm at right now. <laughs> I love this, this language. So is, uh, I mean, are you, are you, are you in a writing program or something? I love it. Breaking no. Is it a house? It says back to a house. You guys break breaking it into the house. No, <laughs> language, the language. You know, we say things like breaking into act two, or I gotta like break the back of the story, or 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 or. Mm -hmm. her. He's, I'm, I'm like, what? You know, yeah, I'd run too if you were gonna break in my house. Um, right. But you know, where are you at in the story? You know what I'm saying? I think there there are rules or, you know, maybe a writing book or a teacher might say, and, and maybe correctly, you got to start act two in an exciting way. Like what, with the car chase? What are you talking about? A, you know, or a, a gun, a, a shoot on, you know, Wild West, suddenly you're in the Wild West and people are shooting and somebody's running and there's a wagon and there's an indigenous person saying, oh, come on already, you know. <laughs> uh, where are you in your story? I think mm -hmm. that's... Mm -hmm probably the most important question right so instead of trying to be exciting yeah, to be yeah. about where you are in this story and what do you need to see the characters doing being whatever where are they in their story mm -hmm. you know yeah so i think that's kind of and if you know certain for certain where they are what you need to see next because you've written a series of scenes mm -hmm. right for act one and you've yeah. in act one at some place then you know yeah yeah i think um to address your point with the language too i think it is just something you get caught in you know like this is the language of writing and things like that so when you get notes or you get or you're yeah. working in development fashion it becomes this okay well it needs to be more exciting or i don't know I guess that's the thought I have with it is, oh, you have to have an up and then a down sometimes. I, so I guess my other, I mean, I just kind of a tangent on this is how do, 
uh, I'm struggling with breaking out of my director producer making it happen mind and just free flow writing the story that I want to see mind and so if, if there's any hints you have on how to like put one hat aside right I know great <laughs> So, I have a lot of hats. I'm in a I'm in a theater right now. So <laughs> most of them look like this. Just change my hat. Just the same. Um, uh, I would just say focus on the story. You know. Okay. So I think as a producer, we we could focus on you know the how. Like how is it going to get done? How are we going to pay for that? How are we going to finance it? How are we going to get the permits to shoot at that location? You know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, you know, how to realize that. Um, the director is how the house of it on a, on a different, you know, what does that look like? What kind of car are we going to get for that scene? What kind of actor are we going to get? You know, when, you know, things like that. But the writer, I think is best served by just thinking about the story. What's the story? What's the story? Yeah. You know? So it's bedtime and you're putting yourself to sleep and you're telling yourself a story. Once upon a time, there was a person who wanted this and this and they did that. And then they did that and then they did that. And in the end, they got that. And, you know, it's just, it's just we, as writers, I think uh, when, we, when we put on our, when we wear our writer's hats, we're gonna focus on the story. And not worry about like we were talking to Jennifer, not really worry about if the stage direction is going to be a, are we going to be able to produce that? Oh no. I, so I better not write it. Yeah, just think about the story and, and tell it how you see it. Tell it how you hear it. Thanks. Yeah. I'm struggling with putting those other parts of me to bed because they always want to come out and they have stuff to say. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but it was a really good story. Tell them a bedtime story. And it's the story mm -hmm. of your play. And imagine them in their mm -hmm. bed all tucked in. <laughs> okay. You're going to hypnotize that part of yourself to sleep. Hmm. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Great question, Jillian. Thank you. Thank you, Jillian. Uh, going on to Gloria. Hey, Gloria. Hello, fun to be here. Hi, everyone. Um, I have to leave a bit early, but I just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, I was wondering, I guess for you, um, like in terms of structure of a piece, I think for me, I'm really trying, I'm, I've had the fun of being like, I, you know, the kind of like kind of the more nitty gritty structure. It's been fun to kind of write it and to be taken on the journey and the gut and but now I feel like I'm more in the weeds of like like timing wise things are feeling a bit off or like okay does this make sense to happen here and it's just sort of the way things land and I think in general I sort of was wondering if when you write when you when you in your writing process like how do you go about structure are you someone that is more so led by the idea of like if things feel off writing through them until they don't structure wise, do you have a, do you put it in a container of sorts to help with structure? Like, how do you, or is it just different for each project? Um, yeah, so I have to say, but yeah. Yeah, no, it's a great question. It's, it's different for each, for, for each project because I, I'm always following the story. Yeah. Well, I'm telling a different, so each story has its own specific container and there, and because I don't, I, I tend not to, you know, write the same kind of, for example, just plays. I don't write the same kind of play over and over and over and over and over. So, um, and, and some writers do, so they have a formula and they can kind of, this happens, this happens, this happens, and this, they do that. I, I sort of do something that's new to me anyway, every time I sit down to write so far. And so I have to follow the story. And if something doesn't make sense or doesn't land right, it's a feel thing, you know? I have to really feel like, ah, that's that's a little too early to hear that information. And I, I like to, sometimes I like to um, just write it out and see where it goes. Sometimes it's fun to take some index cards and just like, you know, write them out in flashcards so I can tell myself the story without having to write out pages and pages and pages of dialogue. And mm. say, that's helpful. So it's yeah. like, kind of it's like a sketch, like Van Gogh sketched before he painted. You know what I'm saying? It's mm. a, 
technique. So you can make a sketch of it, which you do on index cards. Um, and, you know, do like writers in a TV room, storyboard it or whatever they call it. You know, that's helpful. It helps you see the whole thing or get the whole thing in your mind without having to commit to dialogue and scenes and a lot of pages and pages of writing. Yeah. Move things around really easy because it's on index cards. Mm-hmm. You know, that's fun. Um, yeah. uh, but th- those are, you know, but e- e- with every story, it's different for me. Yeah. I've already, I've already written the thing and now I'm kind of like, oh man, like how do we get it? Like, how do I kind of, yeah, basically. But I think, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So you've already written it? Did you say? Uh, oh yeah, I've already written it. Uh, so I'm, so it's like, I've, I'm like doing the index card thing and it kind of makes sense to me, but also kind of doesn't make sense to me as to how to even do it. But yeah, okay. I was, yeah. If you have a draft of it, you can totally still do the rewriting process. You can still use index cards for the rewriting process. Cool. You've, you have a draft. And while you've already, so instead of taking like seven pages and trying to move them around in the script, you just take the scene on an index card and move it around. It's just uh-huh. a lot. Do you see? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. You can still use index cards to rewrite, even if you have a draft already. The great thing about having a draft already is once you find the order that you like, then you just cut and paste the scenes, mm. and then kind of shimmy it up a little bit to get them to 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 fit and to make sense. Yeah. Like if one scene was at night, now it's a daytime, you moved it around, just make the time sequence work or whatever you got. Does that make sense? That makes sense. That sounds yeah. good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Next up, we have Addie. Hey, Addie. There we go. Hi, Susan Lurie. It's so Hi. great to be here. Um, my question is about, I'm really interested in a story that revolves, or I'm interested in developing a story around the character that has a particularly unique lived experience that um, I at least haven't really seen, been told before. Um, I think it's a really important kind of lived experience. I don't know why I keep using that word lived experience, but that's what comes to mind right now. Um, But it's, it's, something that I the the subject matters and the kind of like issues that I want to touch on uh-huh. in the story and in the through this character are not really experiences that I have experienced up close but necessarily or um, have a lot of personal ties to by any means and so I'm wondering what your process is like researching and developing characters that might be different from yourselves and have you ever questioned whether you're the right person to tell a certain story well I yeah that's great and I always question like am I the right person to tell the story even if the story and I'm use quotes is someone who looks like me you know because because there's always going to be someone to tell you you shouldn't be telling that story maybe it's the story of your family And your relative will come out of the woodwork saying, how dare you tell that story? You know what I mean? Um, Okay, so that's that's as close to you as you can get. Maybe it's a story of someone in a different um, historical period. Well, you're lucky because they probably won't come back from the dead to tell you that you're not. (laughs) But maybe people um, who are maybe more related to you, maybe they're, I don't know what, from from neighborhood XYZ and the people who live in neighborhood XYZ are like, we live here. You don't live here and you don't have a right to tell this story. Sure, sure, sure. There's always, especially these days, a lot of uh, mindfulness going on, which often demonstrates itself as policing. I'm just going to say that. There's a lot of policing going on these days. And Sometimes people go, you know, we have to make sure that only the right people tell the stories that they should. But at a certain point, in my personal opinion, it goes a little too far. It goes a little too far. And people question your bona fides and authenticity at every turn. When we did the Gershwin's Poor Game Best on Broadway, there was a letter in the New York Times, the Gershwin's Poor Game Best, you know. We were invited by the Gershwin estate to adapt the beautiful musical. Right. Me and Diane Paulus and she gathered together a great group of people and we were invited by the Gershwin estate. There was a letter in the New York Times condemning us before they had seen the show. 
How dare they? I'm, I'm paraphrasing the letter. How dare they? They, meaning me and Diane Paulus and the handful of awesome artists, they don't have the right to adapt that work. Now, I don't know, does, does this give me the right to adapt Porgy and Bess from the Gershwins at the invitation of the Gershwin estate? I don't know. But someone thought we didn't have the right to do it. And that's, that's, some, that's some like, what? Okay, and that person was Stephen Sondheim. You can look it up. He wrote West Side Story. Did anybody question his right? So there's a lot of like, who's got the right to say what? I say, Addie, if you come to it with, do a lot of research, if they don't look like you and they ain't your people or whatever, do a lot of research, be respectful to as much as you can be, maybe uh, bring on people who might have a more close to lived experience with the people and continue to ask yourself that question every day. And there's Thank always you. someone come out of the woodwork saying, no, you can't talk about granny. Only I can talk about grandma. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, whole lot of policing going on these days. Yeah. So yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if it's good for art. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It was very hard for Porgy and Bess. We still won the Tony. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, one last question from Jake. And just to be mindful of time, we only have a couple of minutes because uh, we got to end right on time today. Uh, but feel free to ask your question, Jake. Hey, Jake. Hey. Uh, hi, Miss Susan. Thank you for taking the time to answer my question. Uh, I'm just, I'm still a beginning like playwright trying to find my footing. And so I have an idea for a play and I'm starting to feel like I think I hear the different characters talking, but I'm not quite sure when or where to start. And I didn't know if you could offer any um, sort of perspective on how maybe you decide, like, how you go from, uh, I kind of have an idea I'm stirring around to, mm -hmm. like, I think I'm ready to start figuring this out on the page and, like, you know, uh, the, the hunter gathering part of the artistic uh -huh. process. Yeah. That's a great question, Jake. Uh, so how do we go from like, mm, I, I got some characters in mind to, yeah. Um, I would say what might be fun is interviewing them as if they're real people because they're going to be soon. You know what I mean? Just talk okay. to them as if you're in a, you know, you could interview them, like do the sort of, you know, 60 minutes, you know, <laughs> talking to them like this, or you can pretend you're overhearing them talking in a coffee shop with another character that might be in your play. That's fun you know, and kind of write down what they say. That might be really fun. And spend, spend some time with them, you know, set your timer for 20 minutes and talk to them. Do more listening than talking. Ask them why they want to be in the play. You know, ask them about their life and what they're up to, all those kinds of things. So you have, you're gathering information on them and you're also gathering maybe, you know, information about what might happen uh, during the course of your play you know that might be fun um that's the that's that's kind of a fun thing I just like talking to my characters get them in the habit of talking to you that's another thing because to get through your play they're gonna have to talk to you okay you have to listen thank you thank you Yay. And, and check back in with us. That you have to do too. Talk to your characters and check and try to do it every day, you know, 20 minutes a day. You know, it's a good amount of time. And uh, check back in with us. We'll be here next week. Will we be here next week, Lolly? Yes. Yes, we will be here next week. And then we'll take a little break for President's Day and then we'll be back. Oh, yes. Okie dokie. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Much appreciated. Jim. Likewise. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, we'll wrap up right on time today and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you next week. Thank you. Bye.